Occupational English Test. This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear a number of different extracts. At the start of each extract, you'll hear this sound. You'll have time to read the questions before you hear each extract, and you'll hear each extract once only. Complete your answers as you listen. At the end of the test, you'll have two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions one to twenty-four, complete the notes with information you hear. Now look at the notes for extract one. Extract one. Questions one to twelve. You will hear a family doctor talking to Paul regarding management of his pain. For questions one twelve. Complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have thirty seconds to look at the notes. Now, have you had any pain since the operation? Well, the operation site itself is okay. Well, that's good because it indicates that it is healing, and I can see there is no infection. But, doctor, I have had some back pain. Ah,、uh, that's normal. But can you tell me exactly where it hurts? Mostly in the upper back, near the shoulders. And is it affecting your sleep? Yeah, it is a bit. Okay. Yes, that's perfectly normal, especially following chest surgery, and it will gradually reduce over time. Paul, what medication have you been taking?、Uh, I've been taking paracetamol, and if I have to, Endone. And has the medication been effective?、Uh, the paracetamol is not that effective, really. It doesn't completely relieve the pain, so I've been using the Endone, which works really well, and I prefer to take that. Okay, well, Endone is more powerful medication than paracetamol, but it's very important to take the paracetamol for the pain, and you shouldn't really take any more than the prescribed dose, as Endone is a Schedule Eight drug, which means it can lead to addiction if you take any more than what you have been prescribed. Well, I can do that, but to tell you the truth, I have been taking it a little more frequently, and I've run out of Endone. And I was hoping to get another prescription, as it works better than paracetamol. Is that possible?、Um, I'm, a, I'm a little reluctant to do that, as it can lead to side effects. But there are some other measures you can take. Like what, doctor? Well, stick to the paracetamol, and also by doing gentle exercise, relaxation, and focusing on other things rather than the pain, these things can really help. Okay. And as I said, you will find that over the next couple of weeks, the pain will gradually reduce. You know, doctor, I do worry when I get pain, and I wonder whether it could lead to serious problems. Yes. Well, I would like to talk to you about that. Now, you said your pain is on your shoulders and upper back. That's right. Well, as I said. That is normal, but the main things to look out for include pain that is not responding to the paracetamol or Endone,、mm-hmm. and if the pain is associated with nausea or vomiting, then that is significant. I see. And if the pain is radiating in any way, especially down your back or arms, that is a very important sign. But you've not experienced this, have you? No, not like that, doctor. Good. But if any of those symptoms develop, you'll need to get medical treatment as soon as possible. Extract two. 
questions 13 to 24. You will hear a general practitioner talking to Lewis, regarding his condition. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Hi, hello, I'm Dr. Mary Flynn, and can you give me your name, please? Hi, I'm Lewis. Hi, welcome. Can you tell me why you've come to see me today, Lewis? Yep, um, I hurt my back recently. It's a bit sore. I hurt it last week as well, and I hurt it again. Right, so this is something that's happened before as well? Um, yeah, I've hurt my back before. When I was 16, I hurt it playing cricket. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't play cricket anymore. I find it too painful. Right, so how long uh, how long is that now that you haven't been playing cricket? Um, I heard it when I was 16 and I'm 21 now, so I've been in about five years. Right, okay. And do, do you play any other sports? Um, I play football during the winter and mm. I've just recently taken up surfing. So. Right. And you like sports and you're pretty keen on sports? Yeah, I play, yeah. play a lot of sports. Really good. So having a bad back's not too good for that? No, and I work at a, a liquor store, so I carry a lot of boxes and stuff. Right, so you're always lifting and bending and carrying yeah. stuff, right. So tell me exactly what's happened to your back in this last incident. Um, well, I was jumping backwards and forwards over a football at training when we were warming up, mm -hmm. and I just felt a twinge in my back, and it was quite sore. It was just on mainly the lower right-hand side of my back and very sore and couldn't keep training with it. And then I went to the physio and got some massage and stuff and she said to take a week off and hopefully it'll get better. And It got better and it was fine for a while, for a week or so. And then I went, I was in bed and I moved around in an odd position and my back twinged again. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I went to football training on Monday night and it was a bit sore and I was kicking with my right foot and my back started twinging a bit more and it's tightened up. And now when I lift my right leg, it's quite like I can feel the pain radiating up. Right. So when you say you're lifting your right leg, is the pain in that same part of the back it was before? Yeah, it's in the, in the right hand, lower back. Right. And is it moving down into your buttock? Um, not really. It, it's staying mainly in the back. Right. But it, it's more obvious when you move your leg. Yeah, when it's yeah. fully extended, I lift my leg up and it... It's, it's really painful. Yeah. What about when you're sitting like you are now with your knee bent? Oh, no, it's fine now. Mm -hmm. And in your, have you been at work? Yeah, I've been yeah. at work and it's fine as long as I lift properly. Right. There's no pain. Right, so as long as you're very careful when you're lifting. And the time when you're twisted around in bed, have you done any of that sort of twisting at work or you've been very careful? I've been very careful not to. Yeah, right. So, and is this the same sort of pain that you were having when you were you know, five, six years ago when you were playing cricket. Yeah, it was very similar sort of pain to this. Right. And did it ever get into you? Did it sort of ever go down your leg at all? Not not, not really. It was mm. mainly stayed in the back. Right. And if you rested, did it settle down then? Yeah, it settled down, but it was never good if I tried to play cricket because I was a fastball. I was twisting a lot. So you so you're always twisting when you were bowling and yeah. therefore t making it happen again? Yeah. And they didn't need you just being a fielder. No, it wasn't much good. <laughs> right. That is the end of part A. Now look at part B. Part B. In this part of the test, you'll hear six different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear people talking in a different healthcare setting. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You'll have time to read each question before you listen. Complete your answers as you listen.
Now look at question 25. Now read the question. Michael, I'm a little concerned about some of your observations. I'm going to speak to one of the doctors about them on the telephone. I'm going to give you a call bell here. If you need me at all, just press the button on the top of it there. I'll only be gone a moment. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Hello, is that the registrar? Yeah, it's Adam. What can I do for you? Hi there. Um, I'm a staff nurse of more 10. I want to talk to you about a patient who's got a new score of 9. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's a patient that was admitted with abdominal pain and vomiting. But he's got a respiratory rate of 25 with a saturation of 92 on air. He's got a heart rate of 120 with a blood pressure of 105 over 50. Also a temperature of 38.5. I wonder if you can come and see him for me. Yeah, he sounds pretty sick. I'll be up straight away. Can you do me a favour and bring the F2 and ask her to meet me there, please? Certainly. Will do. Question 26. Now read the question. Now just a word regarding patient photography. Please remember that if you take a photograph of a patient, all the usual information governance and data protection policies and procedures apply. And patient consent must be obtained. In particular, any medical or clinical photography should be carried out after approval has been given by the medical director, who is the Caldicott guardian, as well as the medical illustration manager and the data protection team. Please see our policy on the intranet for guidance. Question 27. Now read the question. Well, whenever a baby this age gets a fever, we have to think about whether it might be either a bacterial or a viral infection. That's why we did the cultures and the spinal fluid and then the blood and then the urine. And so far, nothing is growing out of any of them. If nothing is growing out after 48 hours, then we can assume this was all caused by a virus, and then we can send you on your way. Now, we also have a two-year-old at home. Is Jack contagious right now? And how did he get this in the first place? Well, the virus can be spread through the air. It can also be spread on your hands by touching contaminated surfaces. So just use really good hand hygiene when you're at home, and that will help reduce the chances that anybody else will catch this. That makes sense. Do you guys have any other questions? No, I don't think so. No. Thank you guys so much for everything. Well, we'll be back to check in on you this afternoon, and if any questions come up, we'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great. Question 28. Now read the question. Relatives. Hi. Wow. Hello, my name's Morgan. I'm one of the doctors. So we have done a, a pretty urgent scan on his head and it has shown that he's, he's had what we think is a stroke um, and, he, and he just seemed to have a, a bleed on his, on his brain at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's very serious. At the moment he's quite unwell, yeah. 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 Is there anyone you want to call or you want us to talk to? Or? No, the thing is, I lost my mother. Eight months ago, my brother, less than six months ago, in March, and my son in June. <laughs> really, really rough, I, yeah. I keep thinking, who can I call? I don't want to tell anybody because it's just too much for everybody. Well, we can be here to be your support if you'd like. I know we're not relatives <laughs> or friends, but we can be. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm quite happy just to sit with you if you'd like me to.
Question 29. Now read the question. Okay, Mrs. Novak. We're going to look at your sitting now, okay? Sit, sit, sit. sit. Come on, Mrs. We're going to get you sitting up on the edge of the oh, bed. Oh. So don't worry. <laughs> Peter and I are going to help, okay? So, Peter, would you be able to help me with this, please? Yeah, sure. And would you be able to bring around a chair as well? Sure. All right. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you to roll back onto your side like you were before. Mm -hmm. And then Peter's going to help with the legs and I'm going to help with your body, okay? I am. And we're going to get you sitting up on the edge of the bed. Huh. <laughs> not, not as hard as it sounds. <laughs> okay, so you ready? Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll bring your arm back over here. Question 30. Now read the question. Okay, your heart's quite fast there, but there's no added sounds. 120. Okay, 120. Okay, do we have a blood pressure yet? No, almost there. Uh, can we get him on a heart monitor? Because I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned. Yeah, he's very warm. He's got a high fast heart rate. I think we should put him on a cardiac monitor. How's his urine output been doing, Bill? He's been self-voiding. Um, we dipped stick to a sample, and he was positive for protein and, and leukocytes. Okay, fine. Okay, so he's brewing a bit of a urinary infection. We'll be looking at what we're seeing here. Hi, Annie. Thank you for coming. I'm really quite concerned that Michael here has got sepsis from a urinary background here. Can you put a cannula in for me, please, and take off some bloods? Can you get an FBCs, usernings? Can we get a CRP? Can we get a blood cultures with that group and save? And can we also take a bit of blood for blood sugar as well, please, and let yeah, me know when that's fine. done? That is the end of part B. Now look at part C. Part C. In this part of the test, you'll hear two different extracts. In each extract, you'll hear health professionals talking about aspects of their work. For questions 31 to 42, choose the answer A, B, or C which fits best according to what you hear. Complete your answers as you listen. Now look at Extract 1. Extract 1, questions 31 to 36. You now have 90 seconds to read questions 31 to 36. Tourette syndrome. Tourette syndrome is a type of neurological disorder characterized by involuntary tics and repetitive vocalizations. 
Latest research indicates there may be as many as one in 200 people affected in Australia. It commonly affects people between the ages of 2 and 21 years, with the majority of cases occurring in children aged 4 to 12 years. More boys than girls are affected. Milder forms of Tourette syndrome can be misdiagnosed as it often occurs at the same time as attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and conduct disorder. This condition commonly appears first between the ages of 2 and 12 years. For some sufferers, there may be a lessening of symptoms in late adolescence. It is, however, a lifelong condition that is not degenerative. Most children with Tourette syndrome are able to exert temporary control over their tics and vocalizations, while others require a cocktail of medications. Theories on what causes Tourette syndrome The exact cause of Tourette syndrome remains a mystery, but research is focusing on a number of possibilities, including Genetic factors Tourette syndrome seems to be an inherited condition. A child of a person with Tourette syndrome has a 50% chance of developing the condition themselves. Boys are three times more likely to inherit the condition than girls. Streptococcal infection. The Streptococcus bacterium can cause a wide range of infections, ranging from mild to severe and life-threatening. One theory proposes that a particular infection may be responsible for the neurological changes. Neurochemical abnormalities. The chemicals of the brain, neurotransmitters, seem to be metabolized differently in people with Tourette syndrome, especially the mood regulators, dopamine and serotonin. Since stress and emotional overexcitement seem to exacerbate the condition, learning relaxation techniques can help. Whether or not Tourette syndrome is linked to other disorders, such as attention deficit disorder or learning disabilities, like dyslexia, is still undergoing scientific debate. Sometimes the disorder can spontaneously resolve for unknown reasons. There is no cure. Simple and complex. Sometimes the symptoms come and go over a period of months. There are two broad categories of Tourette syndrome. These are... Simple, a milder version which includes tics such as blinking, sniffing, shrugging and grimacing, and vocalizations such as grunting and clearing the throat. Complex, a more severe version which includes jumping, spinning in circles and compulsively touching things, and vocalizations such as repeating words or sounds, echolalia, and swearing, coprolalia. Other disorders. Researchers are divided on whether Tourette syndrome is associated with other disorders, such as attention deficit disorder, learning disorders, including dyslexia, and obsessive-compulsive behaviours, although they often appear together with Tourette syndrome. Additional difficulties A child with Tourette syndrome may demonstrate other difficulties, including sleeping problems, poor academic performance at school, low self-esteem, and the inability to control their temper. Most children with Tourette syndrome will have normal intellectual development, but some may have learning difficulties. The social stigma is particularly hard to bear, since people often don't believe that the tics and repetitive vocalizations, particularly swearing, are involuntary. Diagnosis Diagnosing Tourette syndrome primarily involves observation of the child's behavior. Since tics and vocalizations are often vented in the privacy and safety of the home, the physician may have some initial difficulty witnessing the child's symptoms in a professional setting. Other tests, such as CT scans, are used to make sure the symptoms aren't caused by some other underlying disease. Treatment Options Treatment depends on the severity of the condition. Most people with Tourette syndrome can manage their symptoms themselves and tend to find a quiet, isolated spot to vent the irresistible tics and vocalizations they've been holding back throughout the day. Others require a variety of medications to help control the symptoms. Generally, the medications are introduced in small doses and slowly increased until the symptoms are managed. Different people need different ratios of drugs. Side effects of the medications can include depression, 
weight gain, and persistent tiredness. Since stress seems to exacerbate Tourette syndrome, learning relaxation techniques is useful. Associated psychotherapy can include learning how to substitute an unacceptable tick, such as swearing, with a more tolerable one. Now look at extract 2. Extract 2. Questions 37 to 42. You now have 90 seconds to read questions 37 to 42. Tobacco laws aim to improve health. Tobacco is the greatest killer out of all drugs, both legal and illegal. Nearly 5,000 Victorians die each year from tobacco-related illness. In recent years, new laws in Victoria have been introduced to reduce tobacco use and exposure to passive smoke. These reforms have contributed to declines in both adult and youth smoking rates in Victoria. The adult smoking rate in Victoria has decreased by approximately one-third from 1985. In 2004, 17.4% of Victorians aged 14 years and over were daily smokers. More changes to tobacco laws in 2006. Further changes to Victoria tobacco laws from the 1st of March 2006 include... A ban on smoking in most enclosed workplaces, for example most restaurants, cafes and shopping centres. A ban on smoking, the promotion of tobacco products and the sale of tobacco products at underage music or dance events. A ban on smoking in covered areas of train station platforms, tram and bus shelters. Strengthened laws to enforce the ban on cigarette sales to people aged under 18. Proposed bans on smoking in gaming and licensed venues. The Victorian Parliament has passed legislation to enable a total ban on smoking in enclosed licensed premises from the 1st of July 2007. Before this date, partial smoking restrictions still apply in gaming and licensed venues, such as casinos. Current smoking restrictions affect all venues that have gaming machines. In single-room gaming venues, the gaming machine area must be smoke-free. Other areas within the single room, such as a bar, are not required to be smoke-free. In gaming venues with two rooms, the entire gaming room must be smoke-free. In gaming venues with three or more operating rooms, occupiers are required to designate one operating room in addition to their gaming room as smoke-free. Penalties for breaching tobacco laws. Individuals who smoke in a prohibited area may receive a $104 infringement notice or a fine of up to $524 if an offence is proven in court.
occupiers, a person aged over 16 years of age who is in control of the area or premises, may also face similar penalties if they allow smoking or fail to display acceptable no-smoking signage. Larger penalties apply for selling tobacco products to people aged under 18 years, unlawful display or advertising of tobacco products, displaying or selling tobacco products at underage music or dance events, placing a vending machine in an unlawful area. Enforcing the law. Local councils undertake the majority of the enforcement of the tobacco laws. Victoria Police, Authorised Transport Officers and WorkSafe Victoria also have enforcement roles. Where to get help? Department of Human Services, Tobacco Information Line, 1300 136 Your local council. Things to remember. Nearly 5,000 Victorians die each year from tobacco-related illness. New laws ban smoking in most enclosed workplaces, in covered public transport areas and at underage music and dance events from the 1st of March 2006. Smoking will be banned in licensed premises from the 1st of July 2007. That is the end of Part C. You now have two minutes to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test.